Here we're going to look at some old friends in a new context, hydroboration and oxymercuration of alkynes. These reactions are very analogous to their alkene counterparts, so we can go through these fairly quickly, although issues of tautomerization do still arise, as evidenced by this first example. Hydroboration of a terminal alkyne leads to an alkenal borane in which H is attached to the more substituted position and bor boron to the less substituted position. This addition happens with anti-Markovnikov selectivity for the same reason it does in an alkene context. The hydrogen in BH3 is partially negative, and so it prefers to bond to the more substituted position as the nucleophilic component, quote-unquote, of BH3. Oxidation of the alkenal borane with the usual conditions, H2O2 and sodium hydroxide or some other hydroxide source, then gives rise to an enol. One thing to note here is that since addition of H and boron in the first step occurs with syn stereospecificity and oxidation retains configuration, in other words, oxygen simply swaps out positions with boron, the product enol contains the OH and H that have been newly added in a syn position as well. This means we end up with a trans enol intermediate. Under these conditions, these basic conditions now, the enol is unstable with respect to its keto form, and so it's going to tautomerize spontaneously into its keto form, which in this case is an aldehyde. This is an aldehyde because a carbon group is connected to a CO double bond that's on the end of a chain. And just as we saw for ketones in the last video, aldehydes are stable with respect to their enol forms, and so aldehyde enols undergo tautomerization spontaneously to form the CO double bond. Hydroboration of alkynes is really synthetically useful because it's the only way for us to synthesize aldehydes selectively from terminal alkynes. Any other method that adds oxygen to the alkyne will either do so in an oxidative way, adding too many oxygens, or such that oxygen ends up at the more substituted position. This is acid-catalyzed hydration and oxymercuration. And so this is very much a synthetically useful reaction. And you'll find yourself thinking of it later after you've learned transformations of aldehydes, such as nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl group. Notice that ultimately the fact that H and OH added syn doesn't matter to the outcome of the reaction, since tautomerization destroys the alkene and leaves us with a CO double bond without stereochemical issues. Put another way, once we get all the way to the aldehyde product, there's no syn or anti issue here. And of course, just as we saw for this reaction in an alkene context, hydration occurs with anti Markovnikov selectivity, with the nucleophilic oxygen ending up bound to the less substituted carbon of the alkyne, in other words, the terminal carbon. The virtue of oxymercuration, which is a Markovnikov hydration method, is that it leads to methyl ketones when it's applied to terminal alkynes without the possibility of rearrangements. And those vinyl cations that we saw in the acid-catalyzed hydration video are heavily susceptible to rearrangements because vinyl cations are relatively unstable. So oxymercuration can be synthetically very useful for substrates in which R could potentially support or stabilize a positive charge. Using oxymercuration ensures that one two rearrangement doesn't complicate the outcome of the reaction here. The mechanism is exactly analogous to the mechanism we've seen previously for oxymercuration of alkenes. In the first step, mercury acetate coordinates to the alkyne in a type 2 fashion in which two bonds to the mercury are made simultaneously, forming an intermediate that may look a little bit exotic with the double bond within the three-membered ring, but that nonetheless is very much analogous to the mercurinium ion that we saw in an alkene context. The more electrophilic carbon in this intermediate is the more substituted position, and so water, which is also present in the reaction conditions, attacks preferentially at this position in an SN2 elementary step that results in ring opening. After proton transfer, we're left with an alkenal mercury intermediate that also happens to be an enol. The order of events here isn't 100% clear, but either demercuration occurs, leading to a free enol intermediate, which tautomerizes to give the ketone product, or tautomerization occurs before demercuration, leading to the same result. 
The order of events isn't terribly important here, so I'll just draw it this way, with demercuration with sodium borohydride occurring before the tautomerization step. Keys to oxymercuration are that it occurs with Markovnikov selectivity, largely because it goes by a type 2 mechanism involving a cyclic intermediate and selective SN2 at the more substituted position, just like in an alkene context. And it occurs without 1,2 rearrangements, since an open carbocation is never actually formed in this mechanism. The products of the reaction are methyl ketones containing a CH3 group linked to a C double bond O group. And notice that this amounts to Markovnikov selectivity with the nucleophilic oxygen atom linked to the more substituted carbon of the original alkyne. 